Thank you all so much for coming. Most of us who work in music, can you hear okay in the back? Okay. Most of the people who come to hear us, generally speaking, until recently, the band or the musicians have always outnumbered the audience. So we're thrilled <laughs> that you would come here, to, especially to honor your own native genius son, Jack Kerouac. And interestingly enough, Jack's favorite composer was Johann Sebastian Bach. He said that so many times, I don't need to repeat it. Well, today we have someone who could do it so beautifully that you'll see why Jack loved the saxophone. His favorites, in addition to Charlie Parker and Stan Getz and so many great players, I could go on and on with that. So we thought it would be a great way to start off this program by having Bach play with a great classical saxophonist because Jack was someone who appreciated all things of beauty. Just as this church has been here 200 years for that reason, the same is true with all the music that has endured. And the big mythology was if he appreciated Bach, Mozart, you couldn't, you couldn't appreciate jazz and world music and French Canadian music and folkloric music and vice versa. And now of course we see that things of beauty don't fit into the category of merchandising slots. They're just about the land of beauty that we all live in if we pay attention to people every day. So please let me introduce someone from Boston you probably heard him when he's playing with the Boston Symphony, but we're thrilled he can be in Jack's hometown, and so am I. Mr. Ken Radnowski. Yeah. These are two movements from the, uh, and when I call them movements, as you, as you might know in music, it was all based on dance. And so these are two movements from uh, the A minor flute partita of Bach. Uh, and uh, by the first jazz composer, Johann Sebastian. Thank you. 
As I'm sure you all know, Jack's family came, moved south to the United States. They came from Quebec, et les gens ne peuvent pas parler français, sûrement. And French was his native language that he learned and spoke at home. Until he was six years old, he didn't speak English. He used to always say, I write in English, but I dream in French. And he was like so many people at home with his feet in both canoes, as the Native American folks say. And Lowell, of course, of all the cities, except for New Orleans, has that spirit of different folks from different places who come here and somehow find a home and somehow keep their heritage alive. And the so-called melting pot does not stop them from being who they were and therefore who they are and who their children or grandchildren will be. And as long as you keep your sense of heritage, you can appreciate the sacred beauty of everybody's heritage and every person. Then you think differently. Jack did that, and that's one of the reasons why his books are still here all these years later, because he appreciated where he was at the time, what came before him, and his responsibility to document that so people in the future would have the, that then become their now. The next two pieces are by one of Jack's favorite composers, Claude Debussy, and it's called Claire de la Lune. And the second one is Jumenopedia numero un, Jumenopedia number one. <laughs> and that, that was by Eric Satie. And we're just so delighted that we can hear these two little pieces that Jack also loves so much by Claude Debussy and Eric Satie, and playing them with a wonderful pianist who is here with us and has played so beautifully before, and we're thrilled that like Ken and Consuelo, in their schedules, they're able to drive up here and share with all of you to honor Jack. Please give a rousing St. Anne's welcome to Yoshiko Klein.
the next piece was written recently, a few years ago, celebrating Greenwich Village. That's New York City, a suburb of Lowell. <laughs> and Jack often visited there. The third movement was for in memory of Frank McCourt, whom I knew when he was still a high school teacher. And he used to go to the Lion's Head Bar on Christopher Street, and we all go in the back room and sing some of those wonderful old songs and learn some of that beautiful Irish music. And the only melody in the whole piece is Will You Go, Lassie Go, which Frank's brother, Malachi, used to close down all of us at four o'clock in the morning by singing so beautifully, one of the great, great folk songs. And playing the piece, again, is someone who not only plays Bach beautifully, but has done so many pieces of living composers, many of them, and we know that you'll enjoy hearing him play, and it's always a mind blower to hear his wonderful work. Again, Mr. Ken Radnowski.
The next piece was just finished about, I guess about a month ago, maybe two months ago. No, a month ago would be accurate. 55 years ago, I took a section of the Lonesome Traveler, Jack's beautiful series of essays, and wrote a cantata, and he suggested 50-some books for me, all of which he read, to find the appropriate texts. So this time I knew which book to use, and I did the same thing, only I spent all that time combing through everything, and suddenly I saw one of his little essays where he started saying, ah, take me back to the village. And I thought of the good times we'd spent there, and the piece kind of came naturally just going through every word is Jack's words, and it's a thrill to be able to honor Jack all these years later by writing another piece. But this is one where I just started out and thought back and thought about the then and the now. And I'm just so thrilled that they could be there. So please, their names are on the programs and they're known as Vox and Plus as a group. And I wanna thank them and especially Bill Anderson who founded this group, who is a terrific guitar player and has spent his whole life trying to have the classical guitar as part of everyone's life, just as the electric guitar is now part of everyone's life. And to bring the beauty of that instrument into a chamber setting where people can do it. I'd never written for two guitars and voice before. And when I heard them do it, I realized what a lucky guy I was. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you also, to thank you all for coming and almost everyone staying here. That's something that you don't always expect or even look forward to. Because if you did, you'd get depressed at an early age. <laughs> so please welcome Vox and Plus in the New England premiere. We gave it the world premiere, I think two weeks ago, in, of Ah, Take Me Back to the Village. <laughs> Explaining something real. 
Let's go back to the village. Oh, let's go back to the village. 